Have you ever wondered why sometimes your fish look like this, this, or even this grouper right here? Well, today we're headed deep into the Gulf of Mexico to answer that very question. During our trip, we encountered a multitude of species, and we were joined by our friend Nick the Scientist, who helped us learn some new tricks to make sure we have a fishery for years to come. So, Tanner's just got these pinfish traps and he usually checks them on the way out and he'll rebait them on the way in. You could like feel the vibration of the pinfish as you pull it up, of them rattling kind of against that metal. And it's a good feeling knowing you got a bait pen full of pinfish. Uh -huh. Oh dude, you got an eel. Uh oh. Pinfish swims in right here and up, and then they have a lot harder time getting out of the cage than they do in, and they just get stuck in there. So this was inside Tanner's trap. Cool looking little eel. Brooke, they got crazy teeth. I'm not grabbing that thing. Brooke says, go ahead and grab them. Uh, uh. He's out. Just got some pinfish in the boat. We're gonna run out about 50 miles, 60 miles to our first spot and try to drop some chum for some yellowtail. Maybe you can see some mangroves come up, but we're gonna drop down hoping for some gags, maybe some other fish there. Then we're gonna run out even further to about 150, 160. That's what we're doing. This spot's very special. It has, you know, it's the bottom is has a lot of fish on it, from gags to all kinds of snapper to African pompano. So this right here, this is a little pinfish. These guys make the craziest vibrations down there on your line, and that's why they're snapper grouper candy. Extremely hardy baits. Little fish can't really pick them apart. That's why they're so good for grouper, mangrove snapper, yellowtails, um, gag grouper. So we're gonna make the first drop right here got some 80 pound tough line fluorocarbon leader 7-0 mustad hook and I'm gonna hook this pinfish right here on the bottom of the jaw and out the top just like that so he's able to swim freely we got like four or five feet a liter eight ounce egg weight and I'm really excited because you know when you get a new bike on Christmas? Well, Ricky and I just got two brand new setups for this trip. This is an Ocean Tackle International Rod, really stout grouper rod. And we got Talica 20s. We got some 65 pound braid, 80 pound mono top shot. And you guys can find that linked below. Wow. Sorry, Ricky. I had to steal your thunder on this side. First pinfish down. I don't think it lasted more than 15 seconds, guys. And it's a red grouper. Which this is a little pretty red grouper. And these are actually out of season right now in the Gulf of Mexico. And we have a very special guest on the boat today. <laughs> Mr. Nick right here from a really important foundation here in Florida called Return Em Right. So, Nick, would you say this is the perfect candidate for the descending this, device? This is the perfect candidate for a descending device. You can see the stomach is coming out of the mouth of the fish from barotrauma. So the gases expand inside the body and actually evert the stomach out of the mouth. A lot of anglers think that's actually the swim bladder, but it's actually their stomach. Um, and if you feel there, you can feel it's nice and firm. That body's full of air. So your two options would be to either vent the fish or descend it. Uh, venting is putting a needle in the side and letting that gas out. We have the descending devices rigged up. It's a little safer for the fish and for the angler. So we'll just clip it on, send it back down to 100 feet, and they'll be free to swim off. All right, you guys got to check out this crazy device. It is a game changer when it comes to preventing fish mortality. So come and meet me up here. We'll use the sequelizer. It's set to release at 100 feet. We're going to clip it on the lower jaw of the fish. You always want to do the bottom jaw because it's a little thicker. You get a better grip. And we'll send this 
guy down and the gases will recompress naturally and they'll swim off and be free to grow, spawn, and be caught again, hopefully when it's in season. So once that fish pops off, the device will actually speed up because there will be no resistance from pulling the fish down. Once it speeds up, you know, the fish popped off and you just reel it back up and it's ready to use again. See that? Speeds really went really fast there. See that? We actually distribute gear through Return Em Right and we include a three pound weight. A fish of that size probably would have been fine with a two pound weight or a one pound weight. There's no golden rule. It varies with different species, but I've noticed about a pound of weight typically gets about up to five to six pounds of fish down to the bottom. The device is open, popped open, release the fish. We'll just set it here and it'll be ready to use again. There's regulations that actually require either a descending device or a venting tool in the Gulf, but anglers should have both of these on board. Everyone who's vented fish before has had a case where it doesn't go down, so it doesn't hurt to have this on the boat. It's really easy to use and the survival rates are really good, especially for red grouper, survival rates are actually higher with descending than venting. So we're, we're giving each one their best chance to, to, like I said, grow, spawn, contribute to the future of the fishery, and then hopefully we can catch more in the future. Man, I tell you what, sometimes these grouper can be so lazy, you go to check your bait and you have one on and you don't even know it. And that's exactly what I just did right there. Feels like a little red grouper, like the one we caught earlier. Oh my gosh, that is a micro. We get a big gag on, this rod's gonna be doubled over. Look at that. Pinfish coming out of his mouth. These guys got a voracious appetite. That grouper was literally just sitting straight up and down with it, not even moving. These fish, if you've ever seen them diving, they're pretty lazy. They pick a little rock or coral head they like, and they just sit there. All those big fish in the chum slick, we just tossed on a half of a pinfish on a light setup, light leader. And we got either a yellowtail or a mangrove. Looks like we got a nice mangrove. Yes, beautiful mangrove. They're so good, such good eating too. Look at that fish. Look at the size. Oh my gosh. That is beautiful. <laughs> Look at this mangrove. That thing looks more like a red snapper. Dude. <laughs> like, what? No, no way. Oh my god. You got it. Look at the size of that thing. <laughs> that is a stud mangrove right there. That's crazy. All right, so descending device on this one, right? No, this one's going in the ice box. <laughs> Captain Tanner's got a chum bag over the side, right? This is a really good bottom spot. The sonar, the GPS is loaded with fish right now. So that chum is flowing down to the bottom. These yellow tails are coming up. And all we're doing is mimicking a little piece of that chum in the current. So with just this little mustadgic head, floating it back there and you can literally see the yellow tail um, come up and eat it. Basically, we just have our spool open and you wait for them to rip that line off and then you just close the bale. These are giant yellow tail, guys. Huge yellow tail just right behind the boat. Insane. Look at this. Flag yellow tails. That's a 17, 18 inch yellow tail. Basically sight fished them right here on top of the water. 15 minutes into fishing with Captain Tanner. Every single time we fish with this guy, it is just a spectacle, man. There's the little mustache jig head in the corner of the mouth. That is every bit of an 18 inch yellowtail right there. They call them flags. Oh my gosh, you think you're Holy moly, look at that thing. <laughs> hey, high five with that yellowtail. That's a nice one. I thought I had a big yellowtail and then Nick pulls up the stud right next to me. Look at this. I mean, it's it, so much fun to catch. Too. Yeah, the Gulf of Mexico has such an incredible fishery when it comes to bottom fish. These guys, although they're bottom fish, yellow tails are usually suspended up. Tanner hung some uh, chum in the water. And when that chum flows, all these yellow tails kind of come up off of the bottom, which these guys are a lot more uh, mid water or top water column, like something like a mangrove snapper or a red snapper. But man, I just, it amazes me when fishing is this good in the very beginning of the trip you're like how could it possibly even get better than this red grouper huge mangrove big yellow tails in yeah. what, the first five minutes ten in minutes insane <laughs> look at the size you guys all stuck 
keep on feeding back, guys. Yeah. Right down there, just down deep. Yeah, I fed it way back there. Another nice yellow tail. They're gonna start to rip it off the spool. You close it, and you set on them. Just like that. Tripled up. Oh, the whole ball of them just showed up at the bow, guys. Phase one of what, Dennis? Phase one of the sleigh yeah. with real deal fishing <laughs> charters? Let's get Phase back down. I know. We gotta get them out there. Tanner's on himself too, look at that. Look, the yellow tails are back. I can honestly say this pretty much ruins yellowtail fishing for me. This is the most insane yellowtail fishing I've ever experienced in my entire life. The fact that they're such a good average size, so close to the boat and you can catch them on light tackle. I mean, that's like a nice yellowtail down by us on a, you know, a night of yellowtailing. Like you get a few of these a night, but this is Tanner's average size out here, which is insane. You never leave fish to find fish. Yeah. <laughs> until you either limit out or get tired of not catching anything, I guess. I, it's hard to beat that. I have watched Nick catch far too many big mangroves <laughs> to not join in on the fun. In addition to flatlining the light stuff, Tanner had these one ounce jig heads that were setting to the bottom. And I just hooked that pinfish right behind the head. Pinfish naturally want to swim to the bottom. They don't like to be up top because they're usually hiding in seagrass in their natural habitat. So it's just another way to present your bait. And that's one of the ways that we've been getting the really big mangroves. Um, because when we've been flatlining the smaller chunks, it's a lot of the yellow tails. And the mangroves do t kind of tend to hang on the bottom. So that's where that jig head comes into play. And to stop these fish, I'm fishing a 6,000 twin power on this OTI rod. Got plenty of juice to stop these mangroves in their tracks and make sure they don't break it off on the ledge. And all of the gear that I'm fishing, all the gear that I'm fishing today, I'm gonna have linked below for you guys. And the way I'm fishing it is I have an open bale right now. So I don't want the mangrove or whatever eats this to feel any of the resistance. So I'm constantly feeding it line when I feel that tap tap, then I'll close the bale just like this, and then I'll set the hook. Since there's not a lot of weight, like I'll feel a really sharp jerk, and that's usually that mangrove biting it initially, but a lot of times they'll spit it. So I'll feed it back to him. And I'm kind of just waiting for him to come back, but my pinfish is on bottom now. Flatlined a whole pinfish on a jig head all the way to the bottom, and it got crushed. Tanner uh, said, if you want a big mangrove, send a whole pinfish down to the bottom. So that's exactly what I did on the new OTI spinning rod, Shimano Twin Power, and it's a mangrove. You know what? You guys got the biggest mangroves, I got the <laughs> smallest one. I mean, still a, a nice fish, but when you see in Brookie and Nick catching all these six pounders and then Vic catches this one. <laughs> but just to put into perspective, this is the smallest mangrove snapper of the day, which is insane. It's a good one. Look at that. That's a fish. Yep. Rick's got a good one. I'm going to let Dennis film her, but that was just a whole pinfish flat line to the bottom with that jig head. Made it down there and it got crushed. You got me in the rocks. Oh, I still feel him. Should I let him come out? Yeah, if you can get in the rocks. Yep, got him. There you go, there you go. Come on. Feels a little better than that last rig. Oh, we got a gag. Yeah? Keeper? Oh, black grouper. Nice. 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 There we go. Big mangoes and a black grouper. Come on, Captain Tanner. Talk about a good spot, huh? Look at that circle hook. Perfect. Honestly, one of the most beautiful groupers. See those copper spots there? That's one of the telltale signs for a black grouper over a gag. Also, they have more rectangular shaped patterns right here as opposed to gags are more irregular. Just a beautiful fish right there. 
We fish with so many different people and it's refreshing to fish with people who not only can fish, but are really good on camera. It's, it's funny because when you meet someone new for the first time, a lot of people kind of lock up on camera. Nick is killing it, guys. You guys give him a comment below. Not only is he super entertaining, but he's educating you guys. It's a good thing that he's, that return him rights got him because this guy is good on video. Stuff like this. So I took a live pinfish, snipped the tail so it can swim as well, and dropped it down. <laughs> oh my God. That up for oh you quick. My God. So we're just using these little yellow tail hooks, light leader. I had big pinfish on, catching these stud mangrove snapper, every bit of 23 inches on a 3000 sp series spinner and what, 15 pound fluoro, Captain? Yeah, just 15. 15 pound. This is, this is some of the best fishing you can do here. All right, found taters on. Feels like a grouper of some sort. Shall see. Nope. Another mangrove. I think I got exactly what Tanner's got a big mangrove. You can feel those real big head shakes. Just such a the eat on a mangrove snapper is so aggressive. I love them. They got these little fangs. They come up and they crush that pinfish. Can't beat it. Light tackle, snapper fishing. Oh, oh I got redemption. That's a stud right there. Look at the, oh, Tanner got a nice one too. Is it, okay, I gotta ask, is it like this like all the time? Cause I've been seeing all the pics you post, but this looks like an exceptional day. You know what? If I say it was like this all the time, I'd be lying, but it's pretty close. It's most, most of the time we run out to this deeper water and a hundred feet of water, we catch some solid fish like this almost every time we get out here. And the unique thing about the Gulf of Mexico, unlike the Atlantic is it takes a really long time for the drop off. It gets deeper, really slow. So it just allows for a lot of natural bottom and uh, bay and everything to kind of flourish. Not a lot of boats can make it out here, you know? So these fish just don't get hammered as much. A fish like this may have never seen a hook or anything in its life. Whereas on the East Coast, you know, you go two miles out and you're 200 feet of water. We're only in 113 feet of water, 70 miles out. Who's is bigger? Uh, the age old question. I'll give, <laughs> I'll give you this one. You think so? Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're out to 157 foot. A lot of these fish on this machine right here are marking red snapper, but we're not after them today since they are closed. We're after what's underneath them. And on the bottom, this hits blacks, gags, some red grouper, and scamp, but the prime target is a big gag here. So hopefully we can get by all those red snapper, get to the bottom with a big piece of bait, and see a rusty belly come up. On the squid, on the octopus? Yep. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. That's a good one, Nick. That's a real good one. I have this drag almost locked down completely. Pretty sure you're supposed to use assist hooks with this octopus, but I just have it as a big J. <laughs> Today's video is called Nick from Return Him Right Catches Everything. <laughs> This guy's on fire today. <clears throat> Got color. I think I see red. Lots of mud. Oh my god. Bring no way. On the octopus chair. Look at this thing. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Oh my god. <laughs> Nick. <laughs> on oh the octopus chair. had a remora on it. <laughs> wow, that's impressive. You know it's a big mud when it's got its own remora. <laughs> Yeah, it's a PB mutton right there on an octopus jig and a spinning setup. Oh my god. Next gosh. time you won't bring him, will you? <laughs> no, we're gonna bring him. <laughs> Look at that. Stomach coming out. That's an incredible fish right there. I can't believe that thing ate the octopus jig. Whew. Almost 36. 
<laughs> wow. With his stomach hanging out, he's close. Yeah, with his stomach, he's 36. I mean, I think that counts, right? <laughs> Part of the fish. Is that on? So I just caught this guy on the bent butt right here. We're, we're looking for a bigger fish and he happened to eat it. Uh, we're going to send this guy back down. He's out of season. Hopefully we'll come back and get him next year. So pull these triggers, lock it into place. See I could hold it up like a bogey grip. And we're going to drop him down. That's actually still recording from the last one. He went right like... All right. There he goes. Come on, be a good fish. This was on a live pinfish, guys. Good run. There's nothing like the feeling of that new reel that you got on the boat. New line, new gear. Feels good. This spot is a lot of big fish. You guys saw that the last spot was a lot of the mangroves and yelltails, but everything here is big. I mean, 10 pound red snapper, 20 pound mutton, big gag we got broke off on. Um, Tanner says that if we don't get any more action after this fish, we're gonna move to another part of this uh, wreck though. Now it's coming up like a bottom fish that just died, you know? Made that first run. Could be, could be our first gag. Or Vic just has Hollywood drag. One of the two. TV drag. YouTube drag. Nah, now it's looking right. It's a red snapper. But catching him on the spinner, you can't beat that. That's my biggest ever red snapper on a light setup like this on a spinning reel. So much more fun than catching him on a conventional. Look at that. All blown up. And you guys are going to see. Nick is going to show us another way to vent this fish and then even possibly descend him. So on the big mutton Nick caught earlier, it had a remora on it. And that's not perfect, just caught had a remora on it. It's not often that you see remoras on snapper. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. It's a real shame that we can't keep them, but we had our fun with red snapper earlier in the year. These guys absolutely delicious. Yeah, so going from every weekend starting Labor Day, you can keep them Friday, Saturday, Sunday until Thanksgiving weekend. Gotcha, and today's Thursday. Today's Thursday. So actually, only people that can keep them is recreational charter, or recreational boats. So yeah. people that have federal permits like me, or for captains, they can't keep the red snapper on there, but that's Got it. This is the sequelizer, right? Yep. And then just clip it. You pull the two clamps here. So you pull these two. Okay. And then you should be able to hold it by the boat grip, or by the device. Yep. And down you go. Such a neat concept, whoever came up with it. And it's honestly the greatest thing ever for a fisherman because like Brooke was saying, she hates seeing when we release undersized muttons that we can't keep. And you see them floating off in the distance. And a lot of times, no matter what you do, a fish is gonna die, right? But if you take every effort to make sure that it lives, then you got a clear conscience. And something like this, having this on your boat, if you guys want to find out more about it, they'll actually send you a kit. I'm going to have everything linked below for the Return and Right program. They got a bunch of different devices, educational videos, a website that basically teaches you everything you need to know. And did I miss anything there, Nick? No, that's pretty much it. I mean, just be sure to follow us on social media. Check out our, our website, returnandright.org. If you message us on anywhere, I'll be the one to answer. So if you have, need any tips or tricks, fishing questions, uh, just general questions about best release practices, I'll be the one to answer. I'm here to help. I'm a fisherman myself. Uh, I like to say I'm a fisherman first and a scientist second. So I'm, I'm team fisherman here and whatever we can do to help, we're here for you. What about questions on how to catch giant mutton snapper on, on octopus jigs? I can actually, I can answer that. Gag grouper and mutton snapper questions on octopus jigs, you can direct my way as well. <laughs> I got to throw that out there. Last attempt at a big gag. Going down with the last blue runner in the live well. We just ran about 18 miles to another spot. 
the last spot we were at, we only had that one gag grouper bite. Plenty of red snapper, all the red snapper you'd wanted to catch. And if we probably set up for muttons, we probably would have caught them. But the game plan was to get on gags today because Rick and I don't get to fish the Gulf that much and we don't really have very many on the East Coast. So I'm assuming the stance right now. Eat it, eat it. Oh. Go, oh. Vic, go, 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 go. Go, Victor. Go. go. I'm not letting him pull. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh. Come on. oh, he's big. He's big, guys. Come this on, is man. this is like 30 pounds of drag from the get-go. Come on. Come on, big dude. This fish is going up. He is going up. Or he's going towards some type of reef over there. <laughs> Jeez, Tanner. I'm on too. Let me get on the other side of you. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Ow. This is definitely a shark. Just solid, dead weight, real fast runs, which usually is not a grouper. A grouper would want to go to the nearest structure. This guy's going out and about. Okay, going down, guys. Cameraman, going down. I'm just gonna smoke a gag. We're on, guys. We're on. Here we the go. Spool. Woo! Get him! Get Dennis in on the action. Snapper? Uh, I don't even know what a red snapper feels like oh. anymore, so. Oh, See color. Red grouper. Big old red. Red. Woo! Groupers are here. Wow. Uh, nice Danny, that's my biggest red, guys. Yeah. For wow. sure. There Thanks, Brooke. There you go. Brooke hooked it right where it needed to be hooked. <laughs> that's awesome. Fought great. Well, yeah, this is my biggest red grouper ever. Thanks to Captain Tanner. Uh, Thanks to Land Shark, obviously. Catch a quick fish while Victor's fighting the shark. <laughs> but we're gonna throw him on the descender here. Let's put down a butterfly blue runner. The last big bait down. I feel someone's line. Is that you, Nick? I don't feel you. No? I think it's gonna be a, a big red grouper. I don't know, it just feels like deadline or something, you know what I mean? So sad we gotta let all these red grouper go. They're all nice size, beautiful fish. <laughs> Look at that. That is a monster, man. We can't catch a gag, but guess what? You wanna catch red grouper when they're in season, you book a trip with Tanner. <laughs> and when they're out of season, it's still so much fun to catch. I mean, we, I don't want to sound unappreciative. You know, it's just, we wanted to show you guys a good gag grouper fishery and some days they're not biting, but look at this. We must have caught 10. We've must have caught 10 stud red grouper from 10 to 15 pounds on live bait, on dead bait. Nick's got him on an octopus jig. He just caught a goliath grouper on an octopus jig, a giant mutton snapper. I mean, when it comes to bottom fish, Gulf of Mexico, Marco Island, you just can't beat it. It's its a fisherman's paradise. You know, a lot of people email me and DM me and they ask me like, where should I come for a Florida trip? You guys want good eating fish and have a good time with your family? Gulf of Mexico, Marco Island. I think it's highly underrated. Everyone thinks of the Keys. Um, little Marco Island, a quaint little spot on the Gulf Coast with plenty of fish. I mean, look at this thing. It's a stud red grouper. I'd be stoked to catch it any other day and I'm still stoked, but I hate letting him go. There's nothing more to say than great day on the water. Um, here is the proof of what Captain Tanner is capable of. Stud yellowtails, stud mangroves, tons of red grouper that we had to release. If you guys are looking for a trip, consider Captain Tanner. I'm gonna have all of his stuff linked below. His website will be on the screen. His website will be linked below. And we got a lot of fish to fillet. So I will see you guys back home in Baltimore.
So back home in Pompano, and I got a really nice treat for you guys because my buddy Ames, who you guys have seen on the channel before, he's a professional chef. And not only is he a chef, but he's our friend, so he's gonna come over and cook tonight. And what he requested with the fish is skin on yellowtail because he's gonna pan sear them and try to get that skin real crispy. And after filleting fish for many years, I'm telling you right now, the easiest way to get scales off is a hose. So I'll go and I'll spray from the tail to the head so the scales get knocked backwards and it works really good. And I'll go from, from the tail half to the head half and you can just see them flying off. I can run my hand here and you can see there's no scales anymore. Now we're gonna fillet up this yellow tail, eight inch Dextream Max Flex knife. And you guys can actually save 20% off all Dexter knives use my code Landshark. Go from the head to the tail. Yellow tails are super easy to fillet. Definitely a fish I like to eat in the first few days of catching because as you see right there, they get a little mushy. They are not the firmest of fish. So it's not a fish I like to leave on ice or in the fridge too long because they will start to get pretty just fragile on you. But eating fresh, they're great. So just picture this beautiful, crispy, pan seared skin. And it's just one of the prettiest presentations of any fish because you can see all those colors. I mean, even scaled up, this yellow tail just looks amazing. I'm telling you, this is one cook you guys don't want to miss because Yames throws down in the kitchen. So we'll see you guys there. All right, guys, we got my main man, Chef Yames, in the house. This guy is a phenomenal chef and a very good friend of mine. And we actually did some snook fishing earlier on the beach this year. It's always a pleasure when we get together. And he is gonna cook it up for you guys, so please give him the respect he deserves because he's one of my best friends and he always throws down in the kitchen. So take it away, chef. Ready to go here. So today we're gonna do a um, little uh, grilled snapper, mock jus, which is uh, like a Cajun dish. It's like a stewed corn and then a little tomato salsa on top. Very simple today. Something fun and fresh and stuff that you can do at home. And we'll go from there. So I'm working on the corn right now. Mok shu is just corn, red peppers, some Cajun flavor to it. And we're gonna cook it down, finish it with cream and some butter, some nice fatty stuff. And then we'll go from there. It's just stewed corn, essentially. So next we're just gonna small dice these, these red peppers and it's just gonna be an ingredient that goes in with the mok shu. So this is a poblano pepper. We're gonna toss that in with the red peppers in for the mock shoe. So we're just small dicing this onion, also going in the mock shoe. And we're just gonna sweat all this stuff together and then add the corn at the end and then just cook it down. So we're gonna do a little julienne on this red onion and it's just gonna be a quick little salsa that goes right on top of the fish when everything's coming together. It's just gonna be tomatoes, scallions, and this red onion. For the tomato salsa, we have the red onion, the, obviously the cherry tomatoes and the scallion. We're gonna go really, really simple with it and do a little red wine vinegar and some of this um, Meyer lemon oil. Sous chef bit clocking in. So, James wanted yellowtail with the skin on, and that's what he gets. So we got all these yellowtail with the skin on, pin bones removed, and what I'm doing right now is drying them. He didn't tell me to do it, but I'm assuming he wants them dried because if we want crispy skin, I'm guessing you want them to be dry, right? See, that's what you, that's a real good sous chef right there. He's anticipating exactly what I need. He's, he's made for the kitchen. So we got the pan hot, we're gonna add a little avocado oil on there, and we're just gonna sweat down the peppers and the onions. Once those are sweat down, we'll add the corn and just cook it out, it's okay. All right, so the peppers and onions are nice and sweat down, so we're just gonna add the corn and then just let that cook for a while. And then once that's nice and tender, we're gonna finish with the cream and butter. I, I can make my own blackening spice, but it's never gonna be as good as this. So we're just gonna dust the dust the snapper in that, and then we're gonna throw it on the grill, which is on like 500, so we'll get a nice char on the on the snapper. You wanna go pretty heavy with the blackening seasoning. A 
with a little bit of olive oil on it. Just give the grill a quick little brush. It kind of helps the skin on the fish from sticking. You're gonna have a, like a little stick no matter what, but that just helps. And then we'll go skin down right on the grill. And fish will kind of tell you when it wants to get flipped. Like the skin will start to release off the grill and that's how you know that the fish is done on that side. Just checking right here to see. Like I said, they'll like, they'll kind of release it when they're ready. You guys know my favorite thing to cook on when it comes to being a fisherman is this unit right here. You got the side burner when we fry fish, don't stink up the house. And then this thing acts as not only a gas grill, but you can actually use it as a smoker. So it's got two different functions and always got to give love to Camp Chef because they hook it up on the channel and it's a great tool to have if you're a home chef. Typically, like I said, the fish will release itself when, it, when it's cooked on that side. If you have to fight with the skin to get it off, then it's really not ready. And those are coming off nice. And then to finish, I have right here a little Cajun butter. It's just a little bit of the blackening seasoning and butter. And we'll throw that right on top of the fish. So the corn is cooked down a little bit. So we're just gonna finish with a little bit of cream. And then right about when the fish is done, this will be done. Beautiful. Look at that. Crispy skin, grill marks, that. Black and butter, it's gonna be good. So we're just gonna do a little bit of corn in the middle. And that's kind of where you want it. You want it a little bit brothy because it's stewed corn, but like not too brothy. Nice piece of snapper on top. And then we'll throw the salsa right on top. And if you want to get real fancy. So we'll go down with the corn. And the fish and then the salsa. James absolutely killed it. Presentation on point. Fish looks delicious. He got his mock shoe, got the grilled fish, and I'm excited to eat. Thank you, James. Absolutely. Seriously, thank you. Good. This looks so good, thank you for coming. Absolutely. You're welcome. Thanks, Vic. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm hmm Are you eating the skin, Vic? You, yeah, that's like the best part. I Snapper know. with the skin on is so underrated. A lot of time you guys don't see us cook it with the skin on, but small snapper like this, like small mangroves, yelltails, when they're really manageable like this, it's that perfect little crunch. It's got a lot of flavor. Um, you get that like bloodline right underneath it, but when it's fresh, it just adds so much to the dish, I think. That was really good. And good. cooked to perfection. Good stuff, James. Really good stuff. It gives yellowtail justice, that's for sure. It does. Yellowtail needs justice. Sometimes yellowtail is super, super mushy if it's not handled correctly. I'll tell you what, the boys handle it correctly. Mm -hmm. It's fire. Anytime I get the opportunity to eat anything that Mr. James cooked, I'm all about it. Usually, like, Adam said yellowtail is mushy, but this is spot on. I'm stoked. Well, it had been a while since James cooked for us and he did not disappoint us for sure. This entire plate is absolutely delicious. The fish is amazing. However, that corn thing is called is really amazing. I didn't even watch him make it, but it is so good. So thank you so much as always. We appreciate you coming. And the mock shoe. 10 out of 10. What about you, Dennis? You're always you're always behind the camera. Oh boy. Why don't you take a bite? <clears throat> Put everyone else on the spot. <laughs> so the whole fish with the skin thing can be um, daunting, but it is really good. You should definitely try it at home because that's some of the best fish ever. Chef, you happy with your dish? Yeah, it's nice. It looked good. Um, I don't think I would change anything. And I enjoy cooking it for everyone. That's like my favorite thing to do. Vic asked me earlier if I like like doing this, and I like thoroughly enjoy doing what I love for my friends. So it's a good feeling, isn't it, cooking for people? Absolutely. And then watching everyone enjoy. 
Miranda, you're a lucky woman. You get to take this guy home every yeah. single night, huh? <laughs> okay, babe. Round two. Dang. I'm gonna send you guys off. Reem's absolutely killed it. Um, I wish there was like something, I, I wish he had his own restaurant right now because I would send all of you guys out there, create a big line and just blow it up. But one day, he'll have the restaurant. He deserves it. Um, you can follow him on Instagram. Yeah. Linked right here. Yeah, on the screen right here. I want to thank you guys so much for watching and big shout out to Captain Tanner because this meal wouldn't be possible without him. Return him right. You guys saw it in action. If you are a fisherman, especially on the Gulf Coast, and you want to practice best practice out on the water, check them out linked below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.